Today, we're stepping into our magical time machine to meet four incredible women who shaped the course of history with their unparalleled deeds. We're going to be looking at the captivating stories of Cleopatra, Hypatia of Alexandria, Empress Irene of Athens, and Joan of Arc. These have been inspiration for millions and millions of women, influencing our world up to this day. Cleopatra VII Thea Philopater was the last active ruler of the Ptolemaic Kingdom of Egypt. Born in 69 BC, she ascended to the throne in 51 BC, co-ruling with her younger brother Ptolemy the Feared. Cleopatra's intelligence, political acumen, and charm were her defining traits. She is perhaps best known for her relationships with two of the most powerful Romans of her time. Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. Cleopatra's affair with Caesar began in 48 BC, resulting in a son named Caesarion. After Caesar's assassination in 44 BC, Cleopatra returned to Egypt. In 41 BC, she formed a strategic alliance with Mark Antony, leading to a romantic involvement. This relationship played a significant role in the complex power struggles of the time. However, their forces were defeated at the Battle of Actium in 31 BC by Octavian, later Emperor Augustus, leading to Cleopatra and Antony committing suicide in 30 BC from the bite of an asp, a venomous snake. Cleopatra's death in 30 BC marked the end of the Ptolemaic rule and the beginning of Egypt's incorporation into the Roman Empire. Her life and legacy continue to captivate the imagination, with numerous depictions in literature, art, and film, portraying her as a symbol of beauty, intellect, and tragedy. Hypatia was born around 360 CE in Alexandria which was a center of learning and intellectual activity during the Hellenistic and Roman periods. Her father, Theon of Alexandria, was a mathematician and astronomer. Under his guidance, Hypatia received a comprehensive education in mathematics, astronomy, and philosophy. She studied the works of earlier mathematicians and philosophers, including Euclid and Plato, and became well-versed in the teachings of the Neoplatonist school. Hypatia became a renowned teacher, and her lectures attracted students from various parts of the Roman Empire. She is particularly associated with teaching mathematics and philosophy. While Hypatia's mathematical and scientific works have not survived, historical accounts suggest that she made significant contributions to mathematics and astronomy. Her life came to a tragic end in 415 CE. Amidst political and religious tensions in Alexandria, she was brutally murdered by a mob, most likely instigated by religious and political rivalries. Her life and death have been romanticized and symbolized in various ways throughout history, making her a figure of inspiration for those interested in the pursuit of knowledge and intellectual freedom. Empress Irene of Athens was a significant figure in the Byzantine Empire during the late 8th and early 9th centuries. Irene was born in Athens, Greece, around 752 AD. Little is known about her family and early life. She married the future Byzantine Emperor Leo IV the Khazar when she was still quite young, and they had one son, Constantine VI, who would later become emperor. After the death of her husband in 780, Irene became the regent for her young son, Constantine VI. Her regency was marked by a struggle for power and influence. Irene was known for her support of the veneration of icons, which led to the convening of the Second Council of Nicaea in 787. This council restored the veneration of icons in the Byzantine Empire. Irene faced opposition due to her policies, particularly from those who supported iconoclasm. In 797, she maneuvered politically to depose her son Constantine VI and became the sole ruler. However, her reign faced challenges, and in 802, she was overthrown by Nikephoros I, who became the new emperor. After her deposition, Irene was exiled to the island of Lesbos, where she lived in exile until her death. Empress Irene is often remembered for her role in the restoration of the veneration of icons and for being one of the few women to rule the Byzantine Empire in her own right. Her story serves as a reminder of the complex and often tumultuous nature of Byzantine politics 
and the enduring influence of religious beliefs in the empire's affairs. Joan of Arc was a peasant girl who became a military leader and a symbol of French resistance during the Hundred Years' War. Born around 1412 in Domremy, a small village in northeastern France, she grew up in a devoutly Catholic household during a tumultuous period marked by the Hundred Years' War between England and France. As a teenager, Joan began to experience visions and hear voices, which she believed were messages from saints instructing her to support Charles II and help him reclaim his crown from English occupation. In 1429, at the age of 17, Joan, dressed in armor, led the troops and played a crucial role in the lifting of the Siege of Orleans, a turning point in the war. In 1430, Joan was captured by the Burgundians, allies of the English, during a military campaign. She was handed over to the English and put on trial for charges including heresy, witchcraft, and dressing in male attire. On May 30th, 1431, at the age of 19, Joan of Arc was burned at the stake in Rouen. Her execution was a political move to eliminate her as a threat and discredit Charles VII. However, her martyrdom only strengthened her legacy. Joan of Arc's life and exploits have inspired countless works of literature, art, and film. Her courage, piety, and determination in the face of adversity made her an enduring symbol of French nationalism and a revered historical figure.